Um, hi and welcome. Glad you could join us today. Sego de Uaguego. Um, I'm I'm really honored to um, have Tom Porter here talking with us today to share on um, the the teachings of the traditional Haudenosaunee calendar year and the ceremonies that take place and, and the importance of that. But um, Tom is uh, I've worked with Tom for a long time. Uh, Learned a lot from Tom over the years and uh, in the Kana Joharegi community that he founded uh, in uh, mid 90s. So Tom's a an, an, uh, renowned author and uh, spiritual teacher. And um, yes, I'd like to introduce Tom. Take it away, Tom. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start first on uh, there's a sort of like a dilemma that, uh, that I'm in to say or most of our people are in, I think. But I am especially in the dilemma because um, when I was uh, growing up as a kid, um, I was a lot of my family, my grandmother and her cousins and all of them, uh, they, they're the, the ones that were faith keepers and chiefs and grandmothers in our longhouse. And uh, that's where I was born into that of a family. And um, so I was surrounded by those kind of people. And um, mostly they only spoke Mohawk. And I know my, my own grandmother uh, never went to school and she, she, never, she never learned how to speak English either and she was a, a dominant figure in my my life as a young as a kid and then growing up young guy and um her and her cousins that were faith keepers and so on uh, they always told us that whenever we do a ceremony of any kind um they were supposed to because we're mohawks we're supposed to uh, do the ceremony in Mohawk, the Mohawk language. Or if we were born as an Ojibwe, then when we do a ceremony, it should be done in the language of the Ojibwe. Or if we were born as a Lakota, then we should do the ceremony in the Lakota language. So whatever, uh, we, whatever we are, whatever the creator gave us, that we should be proud and not never be ashamed uh, to use that language. But uh, because of the residential schools and all that, many uh, people lost their language and um, younger people who don't speak the language anymore. Uh, so, so it's hard now uh, when we talk our language uh, many, many people won't understand. So that's the dilemma that I find myself in. So I find myself translating a lot of times in English, our ceremonies or uh, the things that are important events spiritually. And then I remember my grandmother and the different faith keepers and chiefs telling us as I was a kid, they were to speak our language, but yet our young people, many of them don't understand, and then I feel sorry for them. So then I end up speaking English going against what the elders said, and that's the dilemma. So what I'm gonna do is do a compromise, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna say a few words in my language first, and then I'm gonna translate the Thanksgiving so that everybody will understand what the teachings are that the creator gave us. So maybe that if you understand, then it will inspire people to study their own language and do it properly someday. Then I got a sister, then a genius for the little fingers. Then I got a new liver, 
to Shanka, we near on your tree with the little English, than in a hold of Gondo. Negadi and Tugdalon, Negadi ne and Tugadi Honto, Nesangoya, this is the Shanka, we are going to adopt a hundred of Kali what they want. Negadi we were here. And a guy go on a gayrat, ne shaboya disha, no gua. Nega di we were here, what gay what nega ne do shut out nigula. Nea to cut the hunter, do the legal at the Naraga, dinner at the one order. Then we were here, turn no dunt away, running the Juan or hooded the Gulayanda. Ne hold the shangua we shamboya disha. What I said is that uh, I asked the creator and uh, for permission to use the English language, our white brother's language, so that everybody will understand what what the creators and the way the creator was thinking. And so today we start first when we talk about the creator. I remember uh, my great grandfather that was my grandma's uncle when he was asked what is the creator or what is god and this is what he answered the anthropologist he said if you add up all of the life of all humans and all animals and all birds and everything that lives in this universe and then you summarize all of that life that's in the universe, the total of life in the universe is what we call creator or God. So that's way different Western world when you say God or creator. And that's how we begin with that understanding. And so today, uh, as we are gathered here through the technology of the Zoom, uh, in a way it's good because it, uh, we don't have to travel all over. And so it's wonderful that way. So the Creator has allowed us to gather here now, and also we are still living. And so what we will do is we will gather our mind as one people. And we will put before us many thank you, greetings, and love. And then we will give it into the universe. And we will give it to our creator, our gratitude, our thank you, our love, and our greetings today because we are still living. And so now we say thank you to our creator. And the people who hear that, they will say to or uh huh. And then it is also now that we face the earth. And the creator said that the earth will be a woman and she will be the mother of all life, all humans and all animals. And so when he made the earth to be our mother, that she will give us birth. And then when we have been given birth, from her body, she will nurse us or nourish us or sustain our life every day and every night that we live. And so from our mother earth, every food that we eat, morning and midday and afternoon, every food that goes in our mouth, it came from our mother earth's body. And that's has been, it has been doing that since the beginning of time. Our Mother Earth has never quit to give us the sustenance that we need to live. And no matter if we have been forgetful in our life as individuals or collectively, or no matter if some of the people on the Earth has offended or disrespected the Mother Earth, Mother Earth has never become angered, nor has she ever threw us away as her children or pulled from our mouth the food 
that we need to live. Our Mother Earth has continuously loved us, all the people and life. And so that's the kind of Mother Earth the Creator gave us, the best Mother Earth in all the world, the most loving and the most sustaining. So that I ask the people listening today that we will gather our minds together as one and we will pile many layers of thank you, greetings and love. And you and I, the people acting like one person will pick up this big pile of thank you, greetings and love and gently give it to our mother, the earth because she never threw us away and she continues to nourish and support us every day and our whole family. So Mother Earth with love today, we say thank you. And the people heard that and they said, oh, or uh-huh. And then it is also that the creator made the waters that's in the rivers and lakes and oceans and underground streams called springs. And in the beginning of time, the creator and the end of Mother Earth, when they touched the water, they put a living spirit in the water. And they gave a certain mission or duties that the water is to perform every day and every night. And the creator told the water that they will move and they will live and they will come down the mountains and through the valleys to the villages of the Mohawk, the Ojibwe, the Italians and the Polish and the English. And when they passed through the rivers and creeks, the water where we live, they will quench our thirst and prepare and our medicine so that we will have comfort and we will have sustenance. And so the water has never stopped the duty that the creator gave them to do. They are still running in the creeks and the rivers. They are still moving because they are living. And so they quench our thirst every day. And so we ask today that all the people listening that are my as though we will become one person in this regard and we will put before us many layers of thank you greetings and love and then you and I the people will take parts of that pile of greetings thank you and love and we will disperse it to the east to the north to the west and to the south so that every river, every lake, every pond, every water in the whole world we live in will receive our gratitude and our love and our greetings today. And so to the waters of the world, we say thank you for the quenching of our thirst. And the people heard that and they said to or uh-huh. And then it is also that our creator made all of the food that grows in a form of vegetation. For us with the Nushuni people, he says that the corn and beans and the squash will be the leaders of everything that grows in the garden. And then also the undomesticated the garden that grows freely in the forests and in the valleys, those are also places where we can find help and sustenance. And so today we put them together, the domesticate gardens and the free gardens that grow freely without our intervention. We say and we send our thank you, our greetings and our love to them today and the people heard this and they said, to or uh huh. And then it is also that the creator made all the berries that grows. And where we, the strawberry, after the winter snow goes away, 
the strawberry is the first berry to make a fruit and it is a, called a big medicine. After that is raspberries and gooseberries and blackberry and all kinds of berries right until the snow begins to fly. And those berries are there to help us humans and the birds and the animals. So it is. Yeah, last summer, all the berries came to fruit and it helped us. They all helped us to live. And so what we will do because of that, he says the strawberry will be the chief of all the berry world. And so with oneness of mind, we the people today will become like one person. And with one mind, all before us many layers of thank you, greetings, and love. And then we take from this pile of greetings, thank you, and love, and we disperse it to the east, north, west, and south. So that all the berries that's in the dormant stage now will hear it and be encouraged. So when the big snow melts, they will grow again and the strawberry will be here and all the, the other will follow and all life will be helped again. And so to the strawberries and all berries, we send our thank you and our greetings and our love and our mind is agreed. And when the people heard that, they all said to, uh -huh. and then it is also that our creator made the trees that grow in the forest. And for us, the creator chose the maple tree to be the chief or the leader of all the trees that grows in the forest. And when the big snow of winter starts to melt away, it will be the maple tree that will begin first to run its blood or sap, called uh, wakta, or maple, maple syrup, we will make from that tree. And it is the sweetest of everything. And with that maple syrup, we use it to sweeten the foods that we used to sustain us. And also from those trees come apples and oranges and peaches and plums and cherries and all kinds of things. Hickory nut, walnut, bacon nut, delicious big. And it's all a gift from the trees that the creator made. And so from those, they will gather the wood. So when the cold winter comes, they will make a fire from the fallen branches of the trees so that our families will not freeze in the cold winter. And the biggest gift of the trees, our elders said, is they make the wind or the air that we breathe so that there will be life. And for us Haudenosaunee, the white pine is also the tree chosen to be the tree of peace that there will be brotherhood and peace. And so the trees are still following what the creator and the mother earth did. And so because of that, our minds can become one, the people listening today. And before us, we put many layers of greetings, thank you and love. And then we, the people with one mind, will pick parts of up that big pile of greetings and thankfulness and we will throw it to the east and the north the west and the south so that every tree and their leader the maple tree the head chief of the trees of the forest will receive our word of encouragement and and kindness so that when the snow melts again their leaves will become green and the fruits that they will have Will become ripened and then it will help all life so to the trees of the world we say thank you with love and our mind is agreed and when the people heard this they say they said to or uh-huh
and then amongst the forest in between the trees, the creator let go of the animals, big and small. And of all the various animals that he made, big and small, here where we live, the Haudenosaunee people, he chose the deer, which we call a skununto, to be the chief or the leader of all the animal world. That's why our leaders, when they become leaders, the women put the deer horn on their hat to symbolize their leadership. And so the creator said the animals will help us to live and they will help all the different things grow for they spread the seeds of the berry world. And when we need a shoes or a moccasin, we will use them to help us to have that. But we will never abuse them or waste them. And so it is, we will become of one mind and we will put before us many layers of thank you, greetings and love. And then you and I, though we are one person, will, set, will throw to the east, north, south and west our thank you, our greetings and our kindness to all the animals that are still living on the Mother Earth. We say thank you to them and then they will be encouraged. And so when the people hear this, the people will say, to, or uh -huh, that is what we will do. And then it is also now, next one is the creator just said, and the mother earth said at the beginning of time that he put us people, human beings on the earth and he wants us to work half our life and the other half to rest and have a comfort. And then our creator also said that the humans, he wants us to have and to carry a good mind every day. And he wants us to know the joy of life and the happiness of life. And so our grandma and elders told us that the creator thus made the birds and put many colors of feathers on their body to make it pretty. And then he gave them each different songs and rhythms to sing every day. And then he put the eagle to be the chief of all the different birds in the world. And then he said to the birds, your mission or your job will be every morning as the break of dawn before the sun shows his face and you see the dawn preceding, all birds you will get up and you will face the east and you will sing and you will welcome the old brother's son with a miraculous new day. And when the humans and the deers and the bear hear you singing to welcome the sun, you will in fact shake their minds so that boredom and lonesomeness will not find a womb in their body, in their head, but they will hear the great beauty of the songs of the birds of the world and joy will come to their life. And so the birds are still flying, the eagle is still flying, and there is no comparison to the sound of the beauty of the birds singing. So because of that, our minds will become one. And before us, we will put many thank you, greetings and love. And then we will pick it up and throw it into the universe. And we send our greetings and love to the birds of the world for following yet the creator's way and bringing joy to our life. And so it is when the people heard this, they said, oh, uh huh. And then it is also now to the four sacred wind. We call it in Mohawk, the four sacred wind. They bring the changing of the season. So that when there's a stagnation of the atmosphere, that's what they call tornado or hurricane 
they remove the stagnation so that there will be a fresh air everywhere. And then when the snow is here, it is the wind of the west and south that comes and gently removes the white blanket of snow from the Mother Earth so that everything will warm up and medicine will start to grow and babies will be born. And so it is those four sacred winds that bring the changing of the seasons that there will be life. And so we the people here listening today, I summon you to put our minds together as one and many layers before us of greetings and thankful and kindness. And then we will pick it up and to the east and the north and the west and the south. Many thank yous and greetings and kindness to the four winds that bring us a good life and the changing of seasons. And so to the wind with love, we say thank you. And our mind is a greet. And when the people heard that, they said to or uh -huh. And then it is also in the West, our creator place there, the one that we refer to as our grandfathers, the four, the, the thunder grandfathers. And at the beginning of the world, our creator said that the uh, thunder grand, grandfather will be the, the human beings. And that the thunder grandfathers would periodically visit the humans who are the grandchildren of them. And they will, when they come to visit, bring fresh water to renew the rivers and the lakes and the streams where we live. And the strawberry and raspberry fields that we have and corn and bean fields that we have, the thunder grandfather will bring fresh water to thirst so that they will bring a big harvest. So this past summer, our grandfather thunders did their job too dutifully. They never missed. And they refresh all the waters, the sources of waters that we depend on. And our gardens grew. And then they went elsewhere in the world to do their job. And shortly as the snow melts away, they will return to resume their duties as the creator has told. And so it is, we the people who are the grandchildren become of one mind. And before us, we put many layers of greetings, thankfulness, and kindness. And then we throw it into the Western sky and we say to our grandfathers, thank you for the renewals of the water. Thank you that our gardens grew. And thank you, you didn't forget where our villages are. Love, we say thank you, Grandfather Thunder. And when the people heard this, they all said, To, uh huh. And then it is also there are two suns in the sky. One sun is referred to, we call him uh, our older brother, the sun. And he's the one put high in the sky to watch over us, the older than us, and we're the younger to him. So he watches us, what we are doing every day. And he's the one that makes our babies grow. He makes the corn grow, the raspberries ripen, and the strawberries become sweet. And so our old brother's son brings us light that there will be life. And so because our old brother's son faithfully follows what the creator do, all life lives. And so now we gather our minds, we the human beings, and before us we put many greetings and many layers of love and many layers of thankfulness. And then we pick it all up and we throw it high into the sky and we give it to our old brother's son for the light that he shines and the miracle of life. 
And so we do that today. And when the people, they said to, uh-huh. And then when the sun goes down, there's another sun. We call it nighttime sun, our grandmother, the moon. And she travels a circuit in the sky world every 28 to 30 days. And she regulates the rhythm of the women of the world so that their bodies can prepare to give birth to little babies and in the world. He is the one who has been given the power to make the oceans up, rise up and down every day. And so when we plant our gardens, we follow the stages of the moon so that things will grow and harvest and our people will live. And so our life was determined by the way our grandmother orchestrated this world and our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren were born because our, our grandmother orchestrated their birth. And so we gather now all our minds together as one and we put many layers of thank you, greetings and love. And you and I, the people with one mind, will pick this big pile of greetings and love and we will send it to the moon, our grandmother. And we say thank you for our birth and the birth of our children. And when the people heard this, they said, oh, uh-huh. And then it is also that the creator in the sky world. And our grandmother used to say to us that when you look at the stars at night, that there is nobody in the world that can paint or to draw a picture more prettier than when you look at the stars shining in the night sky. And that's what the creator did. And so it is those stars that help when we travel at night and we, so we won't get lost. They use the stars, how to get back to their villages and travel safely if they have to travel at night. And it is also the stars, our grandfather and grandmother said, also determine our future. And so to the great beauty of the stars, it's unmatched by any human, we send our thank you, our greetings and our love to them. For in the dry season of summer, they're the one that puts the morning dew drops on every grass so that life will be assured. So to the stars and their great beauty, we say thank you with love today and our mind is agreed. And when the people heard this, they said, to or uh-huh. And then it is at the beginning when the world was new, our creator commissioned four sacred sky dweller beings, the unseen forces that are like the wind. You can feel them, but you can't see it. And these four, four sacred sky beings are the helpers of our creator to keep the universe in check and in order. And they were also commissioned to be the protectors of the human beings, especially our elders and our little babies. And so in times of our history and past, when we as a collective human beings forgot our teachings, which did happen different at different occasions, the creator called upon these sacred beings to be reborn as a human flesh, to be the peace pro prophets or direct us back onto the spiritual road that we had detoured in the past. That's where our clans came from, the four sacred beings. That's where our great law, our gaihuil, all the ceremonies we do, our water drums, our rattles, our songs, everything that we have yet today came from them. The creator sent them to deliver that so that we will have life. 
And so to those four sacred beings, we send our thank you, our greetings, and our love to them. And our mind is agreed. And when the pe people, they said to or uh huh. And then, so now we become at the top where the creator is. And you remember what I said, the great grandfather said, the creator is everything in total of life, the the summarization of all life forms is what we call creator. So the creator is in every living thing. And together, all the life is the creator. And so our creator did a perfect job the way our grandmother and grandfather and our leaders told us. And so come creator gave us ceremonies uh, throughout the year, every year, a series of ceremonies uh, by which to renew all of these commitments and knowledge so that we will have a good life and a good mind every day. And so because our creator did such a perfect job when he made this mother earth and this universe, we will become of one mind now. And before us, we will put many, many layers of thank you, many, many layers of greetings, and many layers of love. And we together, as one person of many minds, oneness of mind, we will pick up this big thank you, greetings, and love, and we will throw it into the universe so that our Creator will receive our thoughts and our kindness because he has given us a miraculous life. And so with that, we open up this session in the ancient traditional way in its abbreviated form. We did the opening, we call it the Thanksgiving. In our Mohawk language, we call it Ohondo Balihodekwa. And if I were to translate that, Ohondo means or before, and Ohondo Gali Wadekwa, the Galiwa part, means that uh, matters or issues of importance, that what you say before you discuss anything that's important. And so call, some people call it Thanksgiving address, but literally it means before anything that's important what you say. And that's what the creator gave us. And so I have opened up this whole abbreviated traditional way. And usually it's always said in the Mohawk language. So um, I guess we'll begin now uh, to talk about the, the ceremonies. Um, um, but before we do talk about that ceremonies, uh, I want, want it to let you know that uh, the Haudenosaunee people, because that's where I was raised and that's where I know most everything that I know came from that tradition, that um, whenever uh, Haudenosaunee people eat food. When they finish eating the food, you will hear real Haudenosaunee when they finish eating, they will say, Nyawin. And that means thank you. And the people, when they hear a uh, Haudenosaunee person say Nyawin after eating, all the people who hear them say that, They'll say, no. That means they acknowledge that person's gratefulness, his thankfulness to the creator and to the, uh, of the food and to the people who uh, produced or cooked that food. But they say it only once, but it touches the creator 
it touches the spirit of food and it touches the preparers of the food. So whenever you eat, our children, they will always say Nyawe. And the rest of the family will acknowledge by saying Nyo. And where you see this a lot is whenever you see there's a Six Nation uh, meeting of our leaders called Grand Council. And when they eat, you'll hear all leaders, all men, or they'll say when they finish eating, Nyawe. Or if it's on a dog, they'll say Nyawe ha. And all the people says Nyo. And that's our tradition. Even my grandmother used to say, and my uncle used to say, even when you drink a glass of water and you finish drinking that water, you're supposed to say Nyawe to the spirit of that water. Or anytime you put anything in your mouth, you're supposed to say that Nyawe when you're done. That's the way the real old people taught us. And sometimes we, we might forget but most of the time, we don't forget. Another uh, thing that I wanted to uh, share with everybody here before we go into the, the ceremony part is that um, there's a shorter, instead of doing that long version of the Ahonda Galiwa Dekwam, there's shorter versions that is just as good uh, to do it. And uh, I wanted to share with you uh, when I was a little boy, and this is the one that I, I have to kids and my grandkids. And uh, I'm really proud of my kids and grandkids because they followed this, all of them that I know of follows it. Uh, in fact, I got two, grand, two grandkids one is eight years old and one is six years old. They live in Vegas. And I talked to them on the phone, eight-year-old boy and six-year-old girl. And uh, they said, oh, we talk to the creator every day and every morning, every night. I said, what do you say when you talk to the creator? And here's what they said to me. This was only a couple of weeks ago. They said, that means, um, thank you, you who made me. I send you my greetings and my thankfulness. And that's the prayer or the spiritual talk that my grandmother taught me when I was three or four, four years. And I taught my kids that. And my kids were have been teaching their kids my grandkids. And so I was so happy to hear two of my grandkids told me just the other last couple of weeks ago on a phone who live in Vegas, what my grandmother had taught. It's so nice. And uh, to further talk about that part, when I was a kid, my grandmother woke me up from sleeping in a bed to go eat. She had finished cooking food, family. And she woke me up and she rubbed on my shoulder. And she says, uh, It's time, she says, you get up now. Yes. And then she's talking. But she don't talk English, you know. She says, uh, you see that uh, window? While you're sleeping here, she says, the creator came in that window. She says, did you know, and I'm only three or four years old at that time. She says, did you know that uh, the light or the rays of the sun are the fingers and the hands and the arms of our creator? That's what she said. Do you know that the light or the rays of the sun is the fingers, the hand, and the arms of our creator? And as you were laying on 
that dog you need to talk it. You lean in that bed. Never hear your that sorry song go your this song. That means the creator found you laying in that bed. And when he found you, what he or ye and not, ja ta kwe ko. He have he have embraced you or he hold you, your whole body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Ne kwe song go no kwa song go ya this song because the creator loves us. So he used the light of the sun, that's his fingers, his hands, and his arms. And now, he hold us, our whole body with his love. And then she told me, so what are you gonna do about it, my grandson? I'm only a kid. And I said, that means I don't know <laughs> in the Mohawk language, Doka. I said, I'm just a kid, I'm baby, like I'm kid yet. I don't know. It's, that's when she told me, soon as you open your eyelids, you're still in a bed and you see the light come through the window. And you remember what she said? The light of the sun, it's the fingers and the hands and the arms of our creator. And so you say, Nyawe, the Gyat Dishon, Newat Kunahuladu. That just means, thank you, you who made me. I send you my greetings and my thankfulness and my love. Now you can get dressed, put your pants on, and get ready to do the work. What are you going to do today? Just a little kid at that time, and I never forgot. And she only told me once. And then I grew up and I got married and I had six kids too. And I told all my kids and they told their kids. So even though grandma told me that 70 some years ago, her teachings, even though she's passed away pretty near 50 years now, teachings are still going. And that teaching must have came from her grandma, her grandma before. So that's how what we follow, the precious tradition of our people. So uh, I wanted to share that with you. So that if you have children and grandchildren, maybe you can consider to teach them that sacred thing. And if you do it right, you will tell them only once and it'll go in their head forever. So now I want to start to talk about the uh, ceremonies at our longhouse. We begin at uh, what we call Satdego Sihne. Sa'degosehne means in the middle of the winter. Or in other words, you could call it New Year's. It's the same. Mid-winter is the same, same thing. And uh, how do we know that? It's because when there is a... Um, I think it's December 21st. I, I think they call it winter solstice, maybe. I'm not sure if that's the name. But it's the shortest day of the, the year. But if you get lost uh, on the shortest day of the year, our some of our grandfathers, in fact, my grandmother's first cousin, he, he was a head faith keeper in our longhouse. He used to use his house and he looked straight up or out. Sometime he had a, a hole in the back 
and he looked up that pole or his house. You can use either one. And whenever that constellation of stars, they call Unaguata, is straight, straight above. When you see that Unaguata up there, straight above, then you wait for the new moon, the new moon when you see the unaguada that's at that's at the uh, uh, winter solstice i think they call it that's when you see the unaguada and then you wait for the new moon and then you sleep upon seeing the new moon five times so five nights after the fifth sleep you wake up that's when you begin your new years so you have to follow the stars and the moon and the day and the night that's how you will know <clears throat> when when the winter is going to start and so when um, the new moon comes, uh, uh, from that time, they're going to send uh, a delegation from our nation. And, and there'll be young, some, some young kids in there because they're going to learn how to sing and how to talk like the older people. And they call them the big heads. And they're going to go house to house, every house in our nation. And they're going to sing as they enter each house. And they're going to invite each person to go to the midwinter or to inform them that midwinter is approaching. <clears throat> And the part of the speech as they sing, entering the house, <clears throat> they say to them, people in the house, our chief, we word in the greetings of our chiefs and faith keepers and clan mothers. And we come to inform you that midwinter is coming. New Year's is coming on a certain day to get ready, get your food ready, renew your clothes, your mugs, and fix it all up. Uh, get all your clothes renewed for the New Year's. Get it in good condition so everything is new. Get the food ready. And when that time comes for the midwinter ceremonies to begin, all the work that you had at your house, you will, you will put that aside because that work, you, you will neglect because it'll be there after the midwinter is done. But you put your priority on the midwinter for so many days and you get ready to go there, the longhouse. And that's why we came here. And they, they usually will bring ashes with them too. To, it's a medicine for the house. It's beautiful to see it, especially when there's little, uh, little boys in there they're trying to learn from the elder people how to do that. I'm really proud of our kids because they can really do lots of things. So then when that's all done, uh, that's usually a week or two weeks before the actual midwinter takes place, that invitation goes out. I remember because I used to be a kid 
going with them big heads to go around. I, I used to like that a lot. Anyways, they say now mid winter or New Year's, what we're going to do at the New Year's, the whole meaning of New Year's is that we are going to, because our one year of ceremony goes in one circle, it starts at the New Year's, then it goes to the next, to the next, to the next, until the circle goes completely around to the next New Year's. So, Tonyungwahahis, that means that's our road. That's how our, long our road is, one circle, one year. And at the end, and we're ready to do another New Year's or another winter day, they said we will build a new fire for our creator. Our nation is going to recommit a new fire a new commitment to our creator. That's what midwinter is for, New Year's dances, is to recommit our whole nation to our creator and to the mother earth. That all our responsibilities, spiritual singing and speeches, creator speeches will be renewed and redone every year, beginning at the midwinter ceremony. So that's what goes on. And for the Mohawk people, uh, it takes eight or nine days, sometime more than that. It depends on the peach stone game, because we have to play the peach stone game towards the end. If it can, it can go on several days, but just by itself, sometime only one day, then maybe it's nine days. And Anadagas, I think they go for 21 days when they do their midwinter. And different nations has different number because we're all just a little bit different. We do pretty near the same things. Some combines different ceremonies in one day and others do only one ceremony per day. And Mohawks, we do a couple of them per day. So that's why it's only eight or nine days. And in those days, uh, the different clans comes together of our nation and they renew everything. So they got uh, some days of the midwinter is for um, Adunwa or Stirring Ash, which means it's going to be springtime, going to be coming a renewal of food and sustenance. And so they use oars and they walk from east to west, following the path of the sun. They call it shaking ashes. Or, and the ashes represents the fertile mother earth to use the oar to shake the ashes or the dirt so that she Seeds and new life can grow from there. And that symbolizes that. And that travels in groups, clans, uh, from east to west all day long. And then there's another day of that New Year's is uh, for uh, we call Adunwa, where the men sings their individual chants of thanksgiving. Each man, each, each man sings for the creator. And that takes a long time. And then there's a part of that also that's put aside when little babies um, have their names raised up. Uh, they call it Ahmadisanagaradat, means that their names will be uh, raised up and announced to the nation. It means uh, they don't get names at that time. They get names when they're born. And then when the Aduma ceremony comes, that's when their names will be raised and announced. So all the clans 
and all the people of the nation will hear it. And usually they will say their names three times uh, from each clan, what their names are going to be. It'll be formally, that's what they call. And what is son of Allah, that they will raise their name. That's a really pretty ceremony too. And um, of course, at all these ceremonies, there's corn soup and deer meat or out time buffalo meat too. And uh, certain kinds of food for the ceremonies. And there will also be drum dance. So every day there's another, another kind of a ceremony. And then there's also one or two days set aside for renewals of medicine societies, uh, different kinds that they have. And um, not everybody uh, needs to go to that unless you belong to that society, then it gets renewed over there. And that can get common to those other society. They use water and sometimes if you go there, they'll splash you with that water. And it's kind of funny to see it too. And so then there's peach stone on that New Year's too. One, one day sometimes goes two or three days, just the peach stone where everybody brings gifts. Um, and they put that as wagers when they play for the creator. The Kaloli Ashagwayadison, they will entertain the creator with the peach stone game. So every day is something else like that. And that's what we call they burn, they make a new fire. They build a new fire for the creator, for the people and the creator, so that that fire will have a brightness for the families. And that's sort of like what the New Year's is about. And then hooked with that New Year's, but it's separate, but it's, it's somewhat hooked to it. Is, uh, we call it Hadui or uh, Grandfather Face uh, Medicine Society. And they take, that takes place at nighttime. And uh, that's when people have to renew their medicine uh, with the society of grandfather, the wooden faces. And there's dozens and dozens of those that people belongs to that and they have to renew that and they have to make a new commitment, a renewal of that too. Um, but that's separate from the, med uh, the actual medicine day part, separate. So after they finish with that um, ode, and I forgot to also tell you too that on the New Year's midwinter, uh, the clan separate. The bear clan and the uh, deer clan and the snipe clan work together. And on those days of the midwinter, they call it Ahadinusakashi means they will split the house. So that bear clan and snipe and deer clan people, they'll come in the woman's door, western door for the duration. And then wolf and turtle, they'll come in the men's door in the east every day, just for that midwinter though. Then it returns to normal after the midwinter. And um, so after midwinter ceremonies are done, then the next one is uh, coming up pretty soon. It's snow, let's up a little bit. And I heard some people already started a little bit. It's uh, what we call maple tree. Maple tree, there's two parts to the maple tree, I would say. Uh, about two weeks before the actual maple tree starts, or a week or two before the maple tree starts, 
they will go into the woods and they call, call it sadda. Uh, that's a kind of a funny word, I guess. Uh, how do you say sadda? Osis means uh, syrup, maple syrup, osis. I'll say, on how do you say It's almost like they will, they will put the syrup in the tree. That's what it says in English. And it doesn't, it, it's hard to understand, I guess, but that's what they call it. And now what that means is they will go to the woods and they will make a fire, so many of them, and they're gonna burn tobacco over there. And they ask the creator and the powers that be that when the people goes to tap trees, that none of the big branches will fall down or hurt the people while the days of maple syrup happens, that there will be a protection so everybody will be safe. And uh, so they have to do that before the actual maple tree ceremony. And once they do that, then they go then the people go into the woods. That's a big job. Uh, they gotta collect sap and all that. And then they gotta cook that. Water. Oh, ugly, they call it. Uh, water sap from the maple. And cook it until it turns into a, sugar, like a maple syrup. And it tastes so good. And that's also a cleansing that a raw, Use from the maple, it's a plungent for you too. It's a medicine. And after they finish, um, however long the sap is going to run, it depends on the weather and the sun and uh, how cold it is and how warm it gets in the day as to how the sap will run. And then they have to cook and cook and cook. It's a big, big job. It's not easy, but oh, it tastes good. And then when they finish that, when they're going to, they will have a big, big uh, maple syrup dance at the long, a big ceremony for that. And that takes the whole day to do that too. And it's a ceremony for the maple tree because you remember when the Thanksgiving, we said of all the trees in the forest, the creator chose the chief tree is called a maple tree because it's the first tree to come alive uh, of all the, it's called the chief of the trees because that's where the maple sugar comes from that we use to sweeten the foods and prepare preparation of foods. That's called maple. So that would be after the midwinter is what we're gonna, what we, we will be doing. And then after the maple, there's another ceremony that's not really hooked uh, to the yearly thing. In a way, it's sort of separate, but it's it's still done yearly too. It's got to be done. Well, it's done twice. And this next one is a ceremony that belongs to the women. They call Okiwe. And uh, that Okiwe is a ceremony that's for the dead people. So they're gonna dance all night long. And this uh, Okiwe is mostly a society run by women. Men helps them because they gotta sing the men, but women run it. And uh, it's all night right on till sunrise. And there's a bunch of songs that goes with it. And there's special drums that goes with it, just for that. They don't use the regular drums. They have to use Okiwi drums. And um, I've been going to that ever since I was young, 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 real young. And I was also a helper to the women uh, all the time, all, almost all my life for that. And uh, it's a time when we gather 
to feast with all our dead people. When we invite our mothers that, that passed away and all our grandmothers and all our great great grandmothers and right since the beginning of the world, everybody who has died, they're all invited to come to that dance. And so we the living people, that's the night we dance with our people that had died, our past, all our loved ones. We have a social with them all night. And uh, we have a big feast, certain foods got to be there. And gifts are there. Different sweet foods or candies and fruits. In the morning time, they give away from the dead to the living. It's a gift from the ancestors to the young people. And that's the day we have that dead people's dance. Or some people refer to it as a ghost dance, but it's not the kind of ghost dance from our West. It's our own Kaoke way. And when they give out food like that early in the morning, the, the members of the Okewe, it's on behalf of the dead people, gifts. And when they grab to get those gifts of food and candies and, and whatever, uh, even the older people, they like to become kids at that moment. And if any of those things fall, when they grab for it, it has to stay on the ground because it was reclaimed by the dead ancestors. It's a really beautiful ceremony and uh, powerful ceremony as can be. That's one I really like myself because I found, I always help them every, every year. And that's sometimes they call it ghost dance or whatever, but that, is to feed all of our ancestors. And I'm telling you that when that happens, you, you can see all your ancestor. If you put your mind the right way and you set yourself up for that, you will be able to communicate with them and see them. Fit your mind right to do it. And uh, there's all kinds of rules to it too. Our little kids aren't allowed to go there. If you can't stay awake all night till sunrise, they, they tell us not to bring kids that can't stay awake because it's too dangerous. If the spirit sees a kid sleeping, they can take that life and you can lose your young that we so we, we don't take our kid, little kids there. And um, it's really a nice, nice ceremony too. And also that, that ceremony, it also has to do with the rivers and the lakes uh, where they're, they say, that's what we call a river. And when you translate that, it means like a snake is moving where the snake is moving because a river it comes from the word snake or serpent and it has to do with that ghost dance as well it's hooked together and so that's uh but that one is sort of by itself it's not, not part of the uh what we call like the four sacred ritual but from that, but it's a yearly thing got to be done. If it's not, if we don't do that, then they say that uh, epidemic or some kind of sickness will come, which will cause a lot of our people to pass away if we don't do that. If we neglect our dead and we don't feed them and meet with them every and then that kind of ceremony is done right after the midwinter, before the leaves turn green, before any vegetation like tree gets leaves on it. 
you're supposed to do, you can't do it after after the leaves come on and they say if you do that dead people's ghost dance stuff after the leaves come a frost is going to come and everything will be destroyed uh, the growth of the vegetation because dead people and so a frost always follows that and it's and it's everything i know it's true I, that's what happens so then after that that kind of ceremony is done uh then then the next one is uh, as soon as you hear a thunder uh in the fall when when uh they had the end of the season, um, thunder dance. They had a thunder dance to bid them farewell, the thunder. So then a certain person has been chosen to put away tobacco so that after the winter, when the first thunder is heard, that person on behalf of our whole nation will make a fire and, and welcome the thunder when he hears that thunder. And then they set a date when the thunder dance is gonna, done for the nation. And the thunder dance uh, is only done when, when they hear the thunder after the snow melts and they hear the first thunder, then they set that date for that. And when they do that thunder dance, uh, people will bring oranges or apples or uh, candy or, or something like that, uh, sweet stuff and fruits as acknowledgement to the thunder. And usually where we live, they, they use a woven basket of the black ash trees, bushel, bushel ones. And uh, they they uh, they have that two of those, or may, maybe more of them depends on how many people are there, I guess. And uh, this is the one in our lawn house. The young people likes that because the young guys, young boys, they become they pretend they become like uh, thunder, the beings of the thunder. And it goes by clans too, the thunder, because they go by clans too, just like us. And they portray the thunder, a thunder dance. And so they sing there. And then after singing and dancing, um, pretending like they're the thunder. And then they put a big wooden stick on the bench. And usually it'll start with the faith keepers. After the faith keepers, then the chiefs and older people, and then the regular people. And what they will do is they will go and, and the oranges or apples they brought or any candies they brought or whatever, stuff like that. Then um, they go to that bench, wooden bench, and they, uh, hold up their fruits and they got that wooden stick, big wooden stick, like usually hickory. And they'll say, Grandfather Thunder, we're so happy that we're here, you, we see you here today. We together today, Grandpa Thunder. We welcome you back because all winter they have been they have been gone. And so now you're back and you're gonna be here to bring a new water, a clean water, fresh water to the creeks and rivers. And whatever we're gonna plant, it will come to water them so everything will oh on behalf of my family, my kids and grandkids. Grandpa Thunder, I speak for them and I give you these gifts. I brought all these apples or oranges and, 
as a acknowledgement because I'm happy you came back. We heard your voice. So he says, so now, Grandpa Thunder, I want you to, and he hits that wooden bench on that wooden stick hickory onto the bench and it makes a big noise like a thunder. And then all those people that's being thunder dancers, they'll holler and uh, acknowledge the people. They heard their, they heard their welcome. They start dancing and rejoicing. Then another will come with his gifts of fruits and, and or whatever. And they put it in that basket. He, he says, Grandpa Thunder, on behalf of my family, we heard your thunder, you came back where we live. We're happy, so happy to see you. And so all these things I have, I want to acknowledge you. That means I will acknowledge you by giving it to you. And then he takes that hickory stick and he hits that. Then when he hits it, they all holler. He said, does all holler? No, no. That means you holler or make war cry. And all the thunders holler and they dance. Put those fruits in that basket for the thunders. And everybody does that. The faith keepers, the chiefs, and the elders. And it takes quite a while for them to do it. Dancing, all the thunders are dancing by the different clan. Pretty soon those big baskets are full of apples and oranges and candy. Then pretty soon the one of that thunders will come and he'll take that, say, hit it hard. And he'll say, oh, my grandchildren, you have to hurry up because we're in a hurry. We got to go someplace else to bring a rain and to renew the waters. So hurry up. If you got something to say or give us something, hurry up because we're, we're hurried to go to another. And he hits it and they dance. But then people hurry up and do it. And then not after, long after that, all that thunder people will take those baskets full of apples and oranges and candy. And they rush out all the dancers of thunder and take it outside. And they divvy that up between the participants who became thunders. And then after they do that, they can come back as regular people and they share, they share all that with their family. And so you see how it blends the thunder to the living. It's a very beautiful, I love it, that ceremony. And that's basically like for the thunder. And that's done twice a year too. One in the spring to welcome them back. And then another thunder dance is done in the fall when they leave to go elsewhere in the world to perform their job. After the thunder dance is done, then the next one is they'll have a seed ceremony. A ceremony to dance for the seeds to acknowledge the power of the seeds, the dormancy of the seeds, because they're going to plant it. And so when, when they do that ceremony, then they can plant after that. And those things that will grow nicely. And there's a ceremony and feast for that too. Um, that takes one day to do that as well. And always the big corn soup is there to, to uh, sanctify that ceremony. Then after that seat ceremony is done, they, they sometimes they're, they're going to have a medicine. Uh, they are another medicine ceremony. Then when that's done, the next one is going to be uh, uh, what do you call it? strawberry dance. But that's whenever the strawberry, it has a fruit on it. And you can pick the strawberries 
And the ones that they want, they really want are the wild strawberries. Well, nowadays, people with uh, less domesticated strawberries. But I remember when I was young, the older gatekeeper women and grandmother and all of them would tell us to go in the fields and find a little tiny berry, strawberry. They said, that means that's the proper one. It's the wild ones. It's the more powerful one. But mostly people are using domesticated ones now. But when you, they use lots of the wild berries. And so that's where they have to have feather dance too to to sing for that strawberry. And where we live in the Mohawk country, that's usually when uh, little baby girls had their name raised at strawberry time. Not the boys, just the girls, girl babies. And uh, after, after the song dance is done, then sometime there will be a raspberry dance too, because the raspberry is considered the chief of the bushberry, because it's the first one. And it follows almost like the strawberry dance, but it has its own day. But some, some lawn houses mix the two berries in one day. After that one is done, then the next one, uh, what do you call bean dance or uh, uh, like a string beans dance. That one is next one. And then the green corn dance by itself. Then, then next one will be a harvest dance. Harvest dance usually takes our long house where we live. I think it was a three or four days too. I think it's three days. Sometimes can go to four days too. It's uh, almost like the New Year's dance, but it's in the middle of the cycle. And they do that again. Then when, when that one is done, they have another memorial for the dead in the fall. And then they have another one after that. It's called end of the seasons dance. And that's where they do this people who are gonna go hunting so many deers and so many animals for the midwinter, for the young men to get ready to feed the nation by going hunting for deer. And when they dispatch them, those men should have deers. And when the midwinter comes, they will, they will cook, the men will cook the deer in big platters. And they, they will, the men will do it and feed all the people at the midwinter. It's very nice to see because the young men have to do their job and to see them execute it, to actually feed the nation. It's really a special sight to see and feeling. It's a very powerful. So if that's at the end of the seasons where they dispatch the young men that they when they can go hunting, that's sort of like the hunting season. And that completes the year, uh, the year. But in between this, there are many uh, society, medicine society, like um, dark dances for the little people, or eagle dances, or otter dances, fish dance, bear dances, all different of uh, ceremonies that are not part of the sky in Yuliwagete, but they happen at nighttime or in the late afternoon. And they're separate, they're, they're their own power, their own different entity like. I didn't mention any of those because uh, people belongs to them societies. So they run it. And usually people who who joined or who society are the ones that run that. So 
not everybody goes to those except if you're a member of it. So that's the spiritual ear, sort of the reader's digest form of Padanashuni uh, ceremony ear. So uh, let me see now, Bonnie, or who to turn it over to if there's questions or whatever. I hope I was able to articulate it properly, uh, maybe enough to make you ask questions. But anyways, it was my pleasure to try to do it. Thank you. That was great, Tom. It was always good to hear that all again. I think uh, as as we listen, we can hear the, all the interconnectedness uh, of of how important uh, not just the human being is. Um, we're not just the center of the universe. We're we're but a, a little part of that in which we're totally dependent on everything else that's connected to um, uh, you know keep us alive. It's not the other way around. So. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was a younger guy, I had an uncle that used to sing a, a feather dance all the time and uh, used to sing a woman's dance. Oh, could he ever sing that woman's dance? And when he would sing the woman's dance, uh, no woman could sit on a chair. <laughs> if they did sit on a chair, that chair would dance with them. <laughs> he had such a good rhythm that the power just had the women make them dance. But um, I remember that sometime we used to go and gather at his house in St. Regis Village. And uh, sometime we'd be there all night long drinking tea or coffee. And um, the sun would be just, and then we would be going home. He used to teach us uh, all these things, talking about plants and why we got plants and why we got ceremonies and how you're supposed to get ready for the ceremony. When New Year's comes, uh, you're supposed to, they call it New Year's, um, make a new fire for the creator. That means you you get, you fix your moccasin so it's new. Even if it's not new, but you, you clean it so it looks like it's new. And your clothes, your leggings, your ribbons, shirts, your stoves, fix it all up so everything new. So when the New Year's comes, your whole means all your whole clothes is brand new. New fire, new clothes, new commitment, a, a brand new life. Every year, it goes one year. So I remember our, our elders telling us that and they would stay up all night talk about and, uh, all those kind of people are all gone now, no more. Uh, I don't know anymore. If they do talk about it, it's just a little bit like what we're doing right now, but no more all night till the sun comes up. I miss that now. Um, can I, uh, I just wanted to share with, with you this last message. Um, maybe some of you might've heard me say it before, but uh, th this, you don't have to do it, but it's just if you want to do it. Uh, this is a message that, uh, this was two years ago, last December, I received this message when I was traveling to a big meeting in, in Toronto. And uh, as I was traveling, I was listening to country music because I love country music. And um, all of a sudden, this country music, so it was interrupted by a, a woman talking and she was talking in a Mohawk language. And, I, and this was, uh, I was next to Rochester. And the only time you will hear a Mohawk speaking on radio is if you're in Gatnawagi or Akwazasne or uh, possibly it's those two places. Maybe you might hear it in Grand River, but certainly Gatnawagi or Akwazasne you will hear radio she's talking a mohawk woman talking or a man and but Rochester, there's no indian reservation next to there and it says this one this woman says uh, oh when i heard her talking mohawk it can't be i says because we're far away from the reservation so i shut the radio off 
and that woman kept talking and she says i'm your mother i'm the i'm the mother of all living things and i just kept listening and she says um the reason i'm talking to you is because you're asking yourself how did that meeting in toronto it was an environmental world environmental meeting two years ago this December passed. And she says, if you go there and they let you talk, I want you to tell them I'm talking to you. And you tell them that I'm lonesome because all my kids have forgotten who I am. They don't know me and I'm lonesome for them. But they have forgotten me. And when you get there, if they open the door for you to talk there, that big meeting, you tell them they're coming is, uh, the day is half night and half day. They call equinox. What I want you to do, your family and you and your kids, on that day, I want you to your house or one of your kids' house and have a dinner with your family. And from sunrise, you have a tobacco burning at sunrise. And all day you have a dinner and then you visit your kids and you tell them who I am, Mother Earth. And you introduce all your kids and grandkids about me and to, about me who I am. And don't ride a car or your John Deere tractor, she said. That's what I was surprised because she knows I got John Deere tractor. You can't drive it. But you can ride a bike or you can go on a canoe on a river or you can go on the trails in the hills here at Kanajua Lake with your family and grandkids. And then at sundown, you burn tobacco again. Then she says, Oh no, what's the liwa yeli? Junior liwa. What goli wa goli wa nundo sir. Now you have completed what I have asked you to do. And that's coming up twice a year, she said, when the day is half night and half day, the equinox. March 20th, it's coming up again. So for two years, my family has been doing this and others who have told us it's been doing And out west, the different nations are doing it as well. But our mother, the earth, she said, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. And don't force anybody or don't shame anybody to feel guilty to do it only if they want to do it. But don't twist nobody's arm. So I wanted to share that with you because the 20th of March is just around the corner. We are, because she still honors us. And with that, I say thank you. I think that just about wraps it up. I like the last message. Thanks, Tom. Um, I think that's most important um, since uh, we're in COVID, you know, and it is just kind of really, if nobody can go out or about, the idea is just to kind of um, think about our relationship with Mother Earth and what she's going through. You know, it's probably twice as, how many times as hard as what the human beings are going through. Um, so just that, just that acknowledgement alone, I think the message is, is really powerful for us. Okay, thank you. This has been great. Thanks, Tom. Okay. And say hello to the okay. ladies for me. <laughs> I don't know with that. I want. I know you've been talking for a while, so I think we will let you go. So glad that you could take your time out to be with us today. Now go. Oh no. Oh. Take care.